Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Five Drinks at Midnight. In the show, we bring the questions, guests bring the drinks, and we try to wrap up before midnight. Sorry we took the month of March off, but we're back, and we got a good one today. We're talking to Jessica Ann Adkins. You might know her as Bourbon Insider on Instagram, but today we're going to go ahead and talk about her real day job, use barrel sales for H&A Barrel Management. Before we get started, like and subscribe, do all the things, the bells, the whistles, it'll really help us out. Let's get started. Jessica Ann, thank you so much for joining us. Five drinks for midnight, five drinks, five questions, midnight, whatever comes first. Thank you so much. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing so good. I just came from a wine tasting for my friend's wedding. We were picking out some $8 bottles of wine. Excellent. Um, so yeah, I'm ready to drink some whiskey. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, I guess the first, what are we drinking first? Yeah, we're going to jump right into it. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> Midwinter's Night Dram. I don't know if you can see this. It's the latest release. So it's Act 10, Scene 6. Okay. This bottle has been the bane of my existence. <laughs> How so? Well, I was able to provide High West with the port barrels for this release. Okay. And it was like when I first started um, selling wine casks. So this was like 2021 um and so high west was like my first big distillery and like this is one of my favorite favorite whiskeys and so like to be able to provide the barrels was like super like i'm like woohoo well <laughs> they accidentally at the warehouse shipped them to canada with another group of my port barrels so they the barrels at high west needed got sent to canada they got palletized. I like, we finally found them. They sent them back. And by the time that they had sent them back, um, they were so dried out. We couldn't use them. Oh. And so I'm like delaying production. <laughs> like, I love this bottle. <laughs> so I'm like delaying production. I'm like, God. Um, and they weren't able to get any more port barrels. Cause like, they're not just like chilling around, you know, all the time there's seasons for port. And um, they had to wait for me to get some more port barrels to them. I am happy to say it is amazing. <laughs> Excellent. Well, cheers. Cheers. All right. Yep. So then question one, always an origin story. So how'd you get started in the secondary or used barrel market? So my background is I was a social worker at a hospital and, um, because I live in Kentucky, did some derby events, got connected with the Bourbon Brotherhood. Um, so in 2017, I started coordinating bourbon tours for a um, for Pegasus Distilled. It's a transportation company. It's a private transportation. Um, and then I started working for Fred Minnick two years after that as his boss, <laughs> as his assistant. Um, did a lot of stuff with Fred and Actually, the company that I work for now, H&A, had hired a recruiter who had reached out to Fred. And so Fred was like, you should really apply for this job. This is like something you'd be great at, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, are you trying to fucking fire me? Like, what do we do? <laughs> um, but it actually, I it worked out perfectly because then COVID hit um, and I interviewed for like six months and I was hired July 1st of 2020. Okay. So like during COVID then? Like the during COVID, yeah. But I, th I did interview for since January to, to July. Wow. So like seven months. What What's the interview process like for like, was it just COVID that took seven months or was there like a huge like test? Like, did you have to know like barrels to, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, is there. They took a long time because they're French. Okay. You know? <laughs> It's a French company that I work for. Gotcha. Our fiscal 
actually start July 1st. They were just like pre-prepping. I didn't realize all that. Um, but they hired, they actually, I was not qualified. So we're a barrel leasing company. We like a financial company. Okay. We lease wine cask um, and distilleries. Like we're new into the distillery area, but we have 55% of the French market headquarters in Bordeaux. And then we have a warehouse and office in um, Sonoma, California. Um. And so they were going to hire a financial person. I don't have any finance background, but they got the approval to hire two people. And um, they just put me into the used barrel sales because of my connections and the people that I knew and the network that I had. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, I knew distillers, I knew whiskey. And so I've spent the last three years trying to learn wine and how like that translates to whiskey. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, that's an easy origin story. So, I mean, that's a quick and easy question one. So, yeah, um, let's get it done. Yeah, we're you're just rapid fire. 20 minutes. Uh, Before we jump into the next question, I want to tell you a little bit about our latest sponsor, Magic Spoon. I love sugary cereal, but as I start to get older, I start to realize it's full of sugar and it's not anything I should really be eating. And I got to earn my booze. So, whiskey over sugary cereal. I'm gonna pick some whiskey. And that's where Magic Spoon comes into play. It's got zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, four to five net grams of carbs in each serving, and only 140 calories per serving. They're also keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, and soy free. Their variety pack comes with four delicious flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. As you can see, I love the cocoa. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their products, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, They'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click on the link below or scan the QR code on the screen and use the code five drinks for five dollars off or go to magicspoon.com slash five drinks to save five dollars today. Now let's get back to those questions. Okay, bottle two. All right, so yeah, question two, bottle two. What are we drinking? Um, this is Frank August. They are a new brand. This particular one that I sent you is a single barrel Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, 123 proof um, barrel five. All right. Yeah, they source um, their juice from Kentucky and then they've been blending and finishing. I really like love, I've already like made videos about how much I love this bottle. I also love the people behind it. Um, awesome. Yeah. And there's so many new brands, you know, there's like a new brand, a new brand, a new brand, but sometimes I just like really connect with people or brands and I'm like, ah. So, so would this be a client or would this be a, just a, a, a brand that you discovered just out drinking? Well, they are clients um, okay. now because I sold um, them some really, really old XPX Sherry PX Brandy barrels, and they're going to do um, a finishing series called Case Study. Okay. So they'll have them in mind. Yeah. Awesome. And I support my clients. So then, I I mean, that, that really ties great into question two. So, I mean, again, it's like, so how much are you involved when leasing a barrel like are you like do clients come to you and say oh i need like a port barrel or do you go and say like oh i have these port barrels that might be really good like yeah uh, can you can you walk us through a day in the life of jessica ann please oh geez yes <laughs> um so for my used barrels i sell those directly we can lease them people are more than welcome to lease used cask but how it typically works is um, I work from our, our European inventory a lot because a lot of people really like the port, the sherry, the cognac, you know, the, the weird stuff there. Yeah. Um, so I have a meeting every Monday with France. We know what wineries are dumping, what, you know, when we're going to have certain barrels. And a lot of the times it's a matter of just like waiting for them to be emptied or be dumped. I do reach out to a lot of distilleries if I have something special. Um, a lot of it's just a lot of logistics, a lot of, a lot of discussions with distillers because everyone here lately is like, you know, I want something new. I want something different. I want something unique. And everyone wants something new and different and unique. Yeah. <laughs> Every single person, even when I was coordinating bourbon tours, I did a hundred thousand people and they're like, I want something new and unique. And I'm like, well, okay. 
it's always going to be new and unique when it's you doing it. You're always going to have a different experience. Right. So yeah. So a lot of my time is talking to distilleries, finding the barrels they want, um, logistically planning that, figuring out how to get them here and invoicing and gotcha. It's not it. <laughs> I'm like, can I get an assistant? <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna do the fun stuff and you just yeah. take care of the paperwork. Yeah. Let me go like meet the winery so I can connect them to the distillery. Yeah. So we are actually talking about um hiring some people to help with the back end stuff just because it's so time consuming. It's so time consuming. <laughs> Um, has there been uh, so again uh, is there like do you have a, like a favorite finish right now like uh, it was a lot of the questions I got when I told everybody I was interviewing was is they wanted to know like what's the weirdest finish that you've worked with what's the uh, you know barrel that went bad that you thought was supposed to be great and then what's the one that was what you thought would be bad that was supposed it turned out really great so uh, like, I know those are all rapid fire questions, yeah, but, uh, no. um, okay. I'm going to first say, if you start with bad whiskey, it's going to taste not good yeah. in a finishing. Yeah. So it really, really is important to have a good whiskey first. Um, and if you need to clean it up, you can put it in another new, new barrel and like, kind of clean it up. Um, Um, honestly, what surprised me that I really liked was a vermouth finish. Okay. Um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not the girl to be like sourcing a lot of weird funky cask because our like H and A, our, our company is very much about relationships. We've been around for like since 2014, we had the same wine clients. So we're like, I have what I have. I don't try to go out and source like ice cask or, you know, this or that. Right. There are definitely drinkers like Art and Cask or Kelvin or whoever that will source like weird, funky stuff. Um, and I'm more about like, we have, I can tell you exactly where that barrel came from. It was at this winery, it was at this winery. This was an organic producer. This had clay soil, you know, like the life of that barrel. Um, but I don't think I've had any bad finishes yet. I think we're all trying to figure out how to finish whiskey. Yeah. Some people throw it in a cask and they age it a week or 20 days. Some people leave it in like Angel's Envy um, six months yeah. or or longer. And then like um, Lux Co or Lux Row blend. So they'll take like 20% of a finished product and then blend it out with like their, you know, their regular. Yeah. So finishing is relatively new and I love like when distillers are asking me and I'm like, no, I'm asking you, like <laughs> I have the barrels and I'll get them to you, but I need you to tell me like when it's good, when it's not. So Christian Huber at Starlight Distillery, he's super close to me, um, like distance wise. And he is like the best at letting me go and try, like, you want to try your barrels? It's been a couple of days. It's been this or four gate. Um, I have some barrels there and they're like, here was it at a week? Here was it at 13 days? So that's like super fun for me to be able to like taste it as it goes. That's awesome. I honestly wish people would leave it in longer. I know like you risk overpowering it, but I'm like, if this is like 28 days, you know, what could it be if you left it longer to really get in and out of that wood? Do you get to do that? I mean, cause that just seems like the most ultimate dream job is just being like, Hey, it's, you know, it's been in for 14 days. Let's go try some, you know, something new. Yeah. And then like, do you yeah, get to do yeah. that quite a bit or are you, uh, or did they just let you be like, oh yeah, we got the barrels and now we're done. So yeah, most it's, it's, it's hit or miss. Cause I mean, I do sell barrels to people that I'd never get to see, um, yet. I'm sure I will see them. Um, I had like, I had to chase down this high West on the You're secondary. Right, right. Like they aren't going to like send me a sample, you know, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I need this bottle. Um, but I will say that the local people, I'm like very fortunate to live in Louisville, Kentucky. So anybody that I sell to in Louisville, which is like a lot of people, I at any time can go and taste it. And that's like super fun for me. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. No, that's just, I mean, that, yeah. that just sounds like, again, you get the one, 
just drink new like you know everybody wants something new and different so you're drinking yeah. new, different all the time so like yeah. you're you're on the pulse of uh uh the louisville whiskey production so i think that's freaking awesome so um and i just met um the good thing about louisville too is that everyone comes here everyone's visiting here so there was um a wine a winery out in napa that's like a really big winery i don't want to like shout their name out um but there was a 23 year old who's like going to be like helping his dad and taking over he's doing moonshine university here and he was like, well, I have some barrels and some wine casts that we've been holding from our own wine because they're going to be making brandy. Gotcha. And then we're talking about like, how to properly use the barrel because there's sulfur, there's this, there's that. And so I get really excited and geek out when I have like a winemaker who knows the wine process, who can help me when it comes to like how to treat a, like a wine cast. Because fortified wines, you know, ones that have like sugar and neutral spirits they don't go bad but if you have like a red just a red wine I mean you're going to set up like volatile acid like VA really fast so it's going to smell and it's going to taint your whiskey and you have like two days to get a barrel to someone so there's a lot of like it's still very new I'm still very much just we're experimenting we're doing tests we're we're trying that's awesome well that's question again Got the origin story. Yeah. Now we know that you have the best job in the yeah. world. So, I mean, like, that's <laughs> fucking great. Keep so, so, question three, drink three. What are we drinking? You know, I could not be here without some old Carter. Excellent. Very near and dear to me, these people. Everyone's always, like, because I help bottle for them. They're yeah. my best friends in the world. I, I'm just, like, super involved. I don't work for them. Um, but everyone's like, send me a bottle, send me a bottle. And I'm like, I, I have two bottles in my house. Okay. Like yeah. I get to drink a lot of old Carter. I don't own a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Mark, Mark and Sherry did, did the show. And again, they I were, know. they were absolutely hilarious and, uh, fun to drink with. So, uh, <laughs> which also drinking an old Carter for question three ties perfectly into question three, because it comes from Sherry Carter. Uh, so Sherry wants to know, uh, what's your favorite memory of me? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, before I start, this is batch seven, okay. um, 133.6 proof, but, and it's, um, American whiskey. So, um, I have so many memories with Sherry. I met her here, oh gosh, four years ago, I guess, her and Mark, the Bourbon Classic. And then during COVID, they lived two blocks from me at the Omni. Very and nice. we all inside. So she would call me and be like, why are there police at your house? Like this happened one day. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. Why are you watching your house? <laughs> um, so I've stayed at their house in Calistoga with them. I There's not just one story, but my favorite story is we were left alone, so we didn't have any supervision. You know, I was supposed to be supervising Sherry. Sure, as as one does. Yeah, and so <laughs> going to this, like, little country concert of someone we didn't know. It was downtown Louisville, and she's like, they wanted a bottle of old Carter, and she's like, maybe we can, like, you know, go to the back, we'll give them a bottle type thing. Um, so we gave them a bottle, and we, we were, like, near the front, but there was, like, a roped-off section. And so Sherry, being Sherry, has to like live life to the fullest she's not gonna like sit in the seat like she, she's like let's be closer I want to feel the music I want to be in the music so we go <laughs> to like the rope and we're like just like dancing and having a great time and then the um the security people like we're like get back in your seats ladies get back in your seats and I was like okay sure I'm a role follower <laughs> mostly and so we get back in our seats and like one song after that, she's like, I can't do this. We got to go back up there. And I'm like, ah, so we go back up there. We get kicked out, of, like kick, like sent back. And then we sit like two more songs. And then she's like, we're going back up there. I have to. We got kicked out. They escorted us out. They walked Sherry, Carter, and I out the front door, <laughs> closed the door on us. We were kicked out of the concert. Because she would not stay in her seat, and that was the best time. <laughs> That's uh, again, I, I I really look forward. Uh, I missed Mark when he was here uh, uh, doing a wine tasting at Travel Bar. I totally missed him, but uh, I, I really look forward to the day that I can drink with the Carters in person because I think it's just going to be a 
like someone's gonna get arrested like we're gonna end yeah. up in jail at some point like that oh is... you you might yeah you might <laughs> it's very possible i yeah we have lots of we have lots of fun stories excellent well and then also she has a follow-up question so she'd like to know where you see yourself in five years Gosh. i don't know we're gonna even have like the aliens gonna be here before then <laughs> um um, okay, so I definitely know a few things. I will always be in the whiskey industry. I will, I, my boyfriend, my significant other, we live together. He owns a barrel cooperage. There is no getting away from barrels for me. Uh-huh. So I'm like, I'm in the barrel game. Like we don't work together, but we're both in barrels and I love it. Um, so I'll definitely always be in the whiskey game, always making friends and connections and it is growing so fast. It's really, really hard to to tell what the what the bourbon world is going to be like, um, especially with all the buyouts and you know just everything. I would love to be a, like a leading expert on finishing cask. I would love to have done all the research. I mean, we all like wine cask are new, you know, with whiskey. So like doing research, putting out information, just making really great shit. Um, get my babies raised. I have a 10 year old and a 12 year old. Um, I'm in school part-time for massage therapy because I don't have enough stuff to do, I guess. Yeah. All right. Former social worker. I know okay. it's like, you know? so I'm like, I kind of miss like in sales. It's kind of like, you're always like selling something. You're always like, and so I kind of miss like the human aspect of it. And plus like my mom has back problems. I want to be able to like physically help them. Um, gotcha. So I have like, four more months left and I'm freaking done with that. So that'll be nice. All right. So probably just doing more of the same. Gotcha. All right. Well, there you go, Sherry. We answered your question. So yeah. And also this old Carter is fucking amazing. So yeah. yeah and honestly, Sherry, that's somebody like, what is she going to be doing in five years? She is you know, doing her art and perfume. And she is like, honestly, somebody I, I love to be around her. I was actually just with her today, practicing my massage. Um, <laughs> Because she's like a mentor, like she's fully herself. She's fully like business savvy and like just creating new things and doing new things. And everything they've done has like been gold. So like, why not do what Sherry does? Now, well, two a uh, massage therapist uh, will help Sherry out quite a bit because uh, when uh, yeah. she did the show, she tweaked her neck. So she was like, yeah. oh, like, so there you go. You, yeah, you, you yeah. Can- and since I'm in school, like I cannot take any, I mean, you cannot pay me, quit trying to pay me, but we have a deal right. that at the end of school, she's going to paint me a painting. Oh, there you go. Get, yeah. So really I'm just working for that, like big horse painting. <laughs> Excellent. There you go. That's awesome. I was going to say, maybe you just have a locker there and they just keep like, put, I mean, putting stuff in every time, you know, quick little, I, you know, get that knock. I, I, okay. When they first, the locker program for people who don't know, it's very much set up like a winery is and like it's a direct to consumer sell. So, you know, there's a fee per month to hold the locker and then you get access to all the releases. You can buy them and store them until you're ready. That like concept was weird to me when it first came out. We don't really do that. Those bitches, they sold out. They have a waiting list. and <laughs> They're doing me, the upstairs. Like, they, like so I was going to take a bottle of Oh Carter to Portland for my one of my bartender friends Nick there when I was in Portland a couple of weeks ago, and I like had to go to like eight different liquor stores to find a bottle of Oh Carter, and I'm like I should have a locker, like I'm there every week tasting and bottling, but I don't have any bottles, yeah. so I'm gonna I'm gonna put my name on the waiting list. There you go, and I'm sure you know somebody that can get you moved up rather quickly. So yeah, I mean, we'll see. <laughs> and I don't get that much special treatment. <laughs> All right. Well, on to uh, question four, drink four. Yeah, drink four. I have, again, people who are a newer brand, Lucky Seven, clients of mine, love them. They have um, a blending team that blends. Um, they bottle at Bardstown Bourbon Company. I think they're getting ready to move from there and do like something bigger. Um, they've been really killing it. So the one that I have here is lucky seven the holiday toast so it's double oak finish and um toasted new american oak barrels which i love i love a double oak i love when people clean up the whiskey and like you know rebarrel it 
which is what the Carters do a lot too. Yeah. Like, no, it's awesome. Yeah. Mm. I love American oak. I mean, I love French oak because I sell a lot of French oak, but American oak. Good stuff. It's sweet. It's All right. So question four. If you were to travel back in time to uh, Taylor County High School, what Ooh, would you uh, tell young Jessica Ann as a piece of advice? Ooh. Go be a cooper. Okay. First, I'm just kidding. I really do wish I earlier in my career learned I, I'm obsessed with barrels I wish I had learned yeah. how to fix them myself rather than like simple things um so I obviously talked a lot in school and I got in a lot of trouble for talking a lot and for being sassy and I think I'd be like listen don't be like insecure about that like I would try to stop talking or try to be more a certain way because I'm like, oh, I talk too much. Watch what you say. <laughs> but also like, hey, talking is good for ourselves. Talking is good. Like it is good to communicate and to like make friendships and to have, like your network, your friends, your like my whole entire life is because the people that I know. And that's why like, I love the whiskey industry so much is because we're just a big ass family here who just like all share a same hobby. I'd never thought I would end up in whiskey. Absolutely freaking not. Um, I hated Jim Beam after high school. I like, almost died on it. Like <laughs> seriously, seriously took like way too much alcohol at way too short of a time. And I never drank again until I was like 25. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I've, I love what how my journey's played out though. I feel like I've been doing the most in every season. That's awesome. I mean, I think going back and telling, telling your younger self to be a Cooper it would be badass. I mean, just oh, yeah. Nice. Like, don't go to college. Stop with the nonsense. Don't get your social work degree. Like, go be go work at ISC because I'm like from Taylor County, which is right next to Lebanon. ISC was there. They were like the biggest. You know, I guess Zach was there too. But I didn't know him then. Uh, so all my friends were at ISC, and it was like a dirty job. And that is literally. I used to set up Cooperage tours and that is not something that I ever even knew that I would be into. Is it kind of normal? Like if you were to be like growing up in Louisville, like, is there like kind of the, the idea that you will eventually some work somewhere in like the whiskey world yes. or is it? That... Maybe now, maybe now. Absolutely. Um, you know, university of Kentucky has a distillers program it's a lot more accepted, but me, when I was growing up, so I'm almost 34, um, graduated in 2007, alcohol, like we didn't have, like alcohol was, we were dry county, Taylor County was dry. There wasn't a bar there until after I'd already graduated college. It's a very Christian town. People who are drinking where it's like, they're hiding it. It's like a shameful thing. Honestly, when I started working in whiskey, a lot of people were like, like unfollowed me or unfriend me or like your lifestyle's different than mine. Like, like you're supporting alcoholism. Like you have all that like shame. So people in Kentucky are probably the people who are least obsessed with whiskey. Okay. But I think it's starting to like, like, how are you going to say, look at all the money we're and the revenue we're bringing in for the schools and stuff. I yeah. think it's a lot more people are taking pride in it now as we get bigger and bigger distilleries and, you know, just it's different than it was. So alcohol is like a no-no. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah. Bill Samuels from Maker's Mark, we interviewed him too. And he he was like, no, I like I went off to go do up like I yeah. I was a lawyer. I worked at NASA. I was an engineer. Like he did a whole bunch of other stuff before he got sucked back into the the whiskey world. So yeah, it's yeah. it's really weird. Like it's it's just the but yeah, I just was wondering if it's kind of like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go be a cooper or if i'm gonna be a... was drinking whiskey so like you're gonna think like all of these distilleries like we didn't have tour programs it was actual factories nobody is buying the whiskey they don't have like a million employees it's really just the families that were making it because who's gonna buy the spirit until until it happened what like yeah. 2015 is when people like started drinking whiskey like really drinking it around yeah. here yeah yeah okay 
And then do you ever run into like a, like a former teacher or whatever that said you talk too much and be like, ah, bitch, like now it's my job. Like I talk for a living now. Like I'm a salesperson. Like, no, no, no. I don't, I, yeah, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I don't like, I remember it was, it was like third grade. One of the teachers was like, she's not like her brother. You know, her brother's really good. She'd be, she's really smart, but she just like talks too much. I'm like, Psst. <laughs> Get back but my daughter my daughter is now 10 and I'm like she's a carbon copy of me and I'm like oof I get it <laughs> I get it <laughs> I get it we need to refine ourselves a little <laughs> all right yeah. question five drink five what are we drinking a little buffalo trace I got some of that around here buffalo trace is Obviously, you can see I go through so many bottles of Buffalo Trace at home. I love Buffalo Trace on ice. And the distillery is about an hour from me. So anytime that I'm coming through, like I go to Tennessee a lot. I come in through, I'll, I'll stop there at the gift shop. Because if you if you stop at the gift shop, usually before, I want to say like 11, they always have something out. I always hope to get Buffalo Trace. You know, sometimes I've gotten Weller and each Taylor and Blanton's. Um, the last time I was a little upset because I got a bottle of Blanton's, which I'm like, great. They didn't have any Buffalo Trace and I was out. <laughs> um, but I mean, even still in the back bar, like pours are still really super inexpensive. And it, I just love the Kentucky profile. You, I love it. Can't go wrong. I mean, it, it's a good stand. Go so, yeah. yeah. I like love all of um Sazerac's product, like the Buffalo Trace line. Yeah. I don't love I don't love Eagle Rare and I don't know why, but I do love Buffalo Trace. There we go. Well, cheers. Oh, cheers. No worries. Oh. All right. So question five <laughs> comes down to the flip of the whiskey Wednesday coin. You can flip it, you can spin it, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to answer. The coin will give us the answer. <laughs> But you, if you want to answer, you could totally answer. So, question five. Do you think being a social worker for four years has made you a better, better salesperson? Yeah, I'm going to flip this, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we know the answer is yes, but... Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. All right, excellent. Yeah. Well, then, I have a backup question, and I'm going to ask it just to see how it plays out. But it comes from our friend OJ. And OJ wants to know, ask, he's like, ask her who did, took her out her first barrel pick and got her into whiskey. So I will say, I love that man. I love taste select repeat. I went on a lot of barrel picks when I worked for Fred. I was usually the driver. <laughs> or, the group, or I was just there. Um, I was involved in a lot of barrel picks, but it was always as like an apprentice as like, someone is not, you know like I was never invited to a barrel pick until OJ and that group came to town it was the national international women's day yep. we went to New Rome and Andrea Merriweather knew them and so she was like you want to come on this barrel pick and I'm like yeah so I'm forever like OJ is like my person I am forever like grateful like he like really brought me into the barrel pick process yeah. and I've done several picks with him and several picks with other people now. Um, it's like a very special, yeah. OJ's, OJ got me into whiskey. He's rude. I give him credit for all that I am. Okay. Heard it here first. Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> well, that's a, well, that's five questions answered. Five drinks down. Jessica, oh, yeah. thank you so much for joining us on five drinks or midnight. So, uh, I'm glad you I'm glad you had me after it took me so long to oh no worries <laughs> but cheers to you and I really hope that we can uh, drink together soon so cheers yeah. cheers to you